This training video explores another Corcon procurement feature called subcontracts. Like purchase orders, subcontracts are used to procure goods and services. The difference between a subcontract and a purchase order is that a subcontract has retainage or holdback. Subcontracts have a considerably more extensive scopes of work. Subcontracts have a subcontract change order process. To find this feature, go to Projects, select a project, and under the Procurement Stats, you'll see Subcontracts. Creating new subcontracts is very similar to setting up a prime contract. Each subcontract can have a defined scope of work, a list of inclusions, exclusions, contract documents, and a breakdown of the contract amount using a schedule of values. Like prime contracts, subcontracts also have four contract types available. Fixed lump sum, cost plus with GMP, cost plus without GMP, and unit price with build quantities contract types. When subcontracts are created or modified, Corcon will check the vendor's profile to confirm that there is insurance records and to see if any of those insurance records are expired. It will then warn the user in red if need be. Subcontract invoices can default retainage percentage or holdbacks from the prime contract settings or you can set the retainage percentage or holdback percentage directly within the subcontract itself. Subcontracts also have the ability to use a Corcon default form or you can provide your own custom detail report template or boilerplate and upload to global settings to print the actual subcontract documents. Subcontracts do appear as committed cost in project analytics if it is marked approved and has a status date. We're going to explore several ways to add new subcontracts and then how to edit a subcontract. The first way, we're going to go to Subcontracts, over to Actions, and we're going to add manually. If a change order or work order are not included, Quarkon assumes this is part of the original prime contract budget. We'll give it an issue date. We'll allow the subcontract number to complete. We'll choose one of the four contract types, in this case, fixed lump sum. Usually you would send this to the vendor as pending, wait for signature, and then mark it approved. But for our benefit, we're going to just mark it approved now, and we'll give it a status date. Next, we'll give it a subject. Select, select the subcontractor or vendor the contact, and a scope of work. In this case, I'm going to just copy the subject. Hopefully you'll spend more time on scope than I do. I'm also going to import that more generic part of the scope, as I've already have one set up in my global settings, which added the inclusions, exclusions, and clarifications. I'm confirming that the retainage or holdback is correct. That defaulted from the prime contract default settings. And now I can add the items. We could include estimated quantities or we can just create this as lump sum. I'll choose lump sum. Include a cost code and tax if need be. Same for door hardware and a cost code and click Save. I would usually attach link files and include document lists. If everything looks appropriate, I will go to Reports, Subcontract Details, and print this on a Corcon default template. 
this template does not include any legal verbiage. It does include the scope of work, a summary, and the schedule of values, the list of reference documents, and a place to sign. This detail report template can also be created in Microsoft Word if you want to use your own template or boilerplate to print subcontracts from within CoreCom. It can also be emailed from the same location. Back to procurement and then to subcontracts. There are several other wizards that you can use to create subcontracts. You have an add from work order, an add from CPR, add from change order, and add from estimate RFP. These wizards are very similar, the main difference being the source of the information. We're going to use the add from standalone RFP wizard to show you how some of this works. Before we do, let's go up to the standalone RFPs. By the way, the difference between an estimate RFP and standalone RFP is that the estimate RFP is part of the estimate process. The standalone RFP can be created right from within the procurement module. We'll go to RFP packages and we'll open the existing RFP. We've already included the scope, inclusions, exclusions, and clarifications. And we've sent this out to two different vendors or subcontractors for bid. You can see that the one subcontractor is considerably less and we've already awarded that RFP. We're going to go ahead and lock it so nothing can be changed through the team link portal and back to procurement. Down to subcontracts, to actions, and then to add from standalone RFP. We're selecting the package, selecting the winning bidder, and I could use this to create a purchase order or subcontract, then we'll click next. The RFP did not assign cost code, so we'll do that here. And we'll use the RFP package title as the subcontract title. Again, this could be a fixed lump sum, cost plus without GMP, cost plus with GMP, or unit price of build quantities. But the RFP was bid out as lump sum, so we're going to use fixed lump sum as the contract type. I'm going to go ahead and mark it approved. You do need to backdate it a little bit and also give it a status date and link any existing related files and click finish. Information was all brought in. A summary is at the bottom. If I want to go to print out that subcontract, I go to reports, subcontract details, and click OK. The information was all created, including the schedule of values. I can also email from this menu back to procurement. The third way we're going to show how to create a subcontract is by copying from an existing subcontract. So I'm going to go to Actions. I'm going to copy subcontract and use a subcontract from a different project and copy it into this project and prime contract. Then we'll click next. We're going to include both items. And even though the amounts may change, we already have the entire subcontract set up already. We'll backdate this as well and give it a subject. We'll give it a status of approved and a status date and click finish. Since it was copied from a different project, we'd want to spend some time reviewing the scope of work, the inclusions, exclusions, and clarifications. And if need be, we can edit the schedule of values and customize that for this particular project. And click save. We can also edit the header. Go into inclusions, make edits, exclusions, or clarifications. We can also change the retainage. There's also a place for incentives and liquidated damages. All can be edited in the header of a subcontract. And then click save and close. And back to procurement. If you'd like to know more about the information provided in this training video, we encourage you to go to the help articles to leads and projects, to procurement, and open the subcontracts help article. 
The information we presented in this training video will be found here as well as additional information you may find helpful. These helpful articles also show the ad subcontract wizards that we did not cover in this training video.